Plus, of all the Hoonie Cheyenne and inbreeding, naturally, there were a lot of colorful characters. Now, one of the most colorful characters where I grew up was a fellow named Edgar Burrison. Edgar was the poor but proud owner of the car wash back home. This is because he had to own a sponge and a hose. He was so poor, he could only afford to eat twice a day. He'd have a big breakfast in the morning, then he'd go off to work, and when he got back home in the evening, he'd have a little supper before he went to bed. But what Edgar did for lunch every day was just go down to the corner bakery. He'd sit down on the curb out in front of the baker's shop and just Ah, uh, smell those sweet aromas wafting out the baker's window. Now the baker, a cruel and stingy man who remained anonymous in this anecdote, got tired of Edgar doing this every day at lunch, and one afternoon he went charging out the front door. He thrust a bill into Edgar's hand. He said, Edgar, I'm getting sick and tired of you sitting down in front of my bakery every day smelling all this good food and never buying anything. From now on, I'm going to have to start charging you for the smell. Edgar, poor but proud, accepted the bill. He walked the three blocks back to his car wash, tore the coin changer off the wall, emptied all those coins into a cigar box, and with the cigar box full of coins under his arm, he walked the three blocks back to the baker's shop. He walked right through the front door, over to the cash register where the baker was standing. He held that box of coins out under the baker's ear, and he began to shake it vigorously. The baker said, Edgar, what in the world are you doing? Edgar said, uh, Mr. Baker, I'm just paying you for the smell of your food with the sound of my money. <laughs> yes, I admire that reverse. First philosopher I ever knew. Walking down the street together one afternoon, he suddenly turned to me and he said, Michael, I have seen you walking around this town for the last few weeks with a handsome young woman on your arm, and I wonder if your intentions are honorable. Are you two going to bind yourselves in holy wedlock, son, or are you all going to get married? And I said, well, Edgar, we'd like to, but we have discovered some family similarities which we cannot resolve. <laughs> he said, Michael, what do you mean? I said, let me explain it to you like this. You see, Elma Turl is a beautiful girl, and I'd love to have her for my wife. And she's just the kind of a woman who could make me happy for the rest of my life. But my daddy said, son, there's something you don't know, and it's something I think you ought to Elma Turl is a beautiful girl, but son, she's my daughter. Well, Alice Green is a beautiful thing, and I'd love to have her for my wife. But she's just the kind of a woman who could make me happy for the rest of my life. But my daddy said, son, there's something you don't know, and it's something I think you ought to. Alice Green is a beautiful thing, but son, she's my daughter. I'm starting to catch a pattern here, no laziness in that cross. Well, I've been all around the whole darn county like a buck hunting for a doe. It seems every girl I'd like to marry is a wild old daddy so. So I went to my mama with the head hung down and she asked me what the matter could be. I told her my problem and she took my hand and said, son, now listen to me. You see, your daddy was such a good looking young man and like an eager young stallion horse. His blood ran hot so you can't blame him for letting mother nature take her course. But you got no reason to be upset, don't you worry, don't fret, don't bother. You see, your daddy ain't your daddy the way he thinks he is, so you can marry whoever you want. <laughs>